order from the government. Yeah. Your, your rights are suspended. but we're going to have to give them a code name so that they do not uh, get sensationalized and removed off my account because these videos must go viral. They, we must share this and make it go as far as we can. Okay, first of all, we've discussed these, these documents that you're seeing right now already, but the code name for this one document on, that you're looking at right now is called Corona. Okay, that's what we're going to call this one and refer to the uh, the pandemic as corona okay so remember that uh, the also we're going to call this document event or let's better yet let's just call it 201 okay so and let's uh, call this document here rock okay rock foundation all right that's what we're going to call it so on the corona you, on this document here, this shows you here, and it was found on the WHO, and you can go on there and type it in as you see it in the title, and therefore you will know it is legitimate, okay? They were conducting a simulation training exercise called Corona, okay? And then on the, you can see that they were already going to go live with it. It was 100% this was staged event, okay? So, then also on the 201, where all of the big wigs, Bill Gates Foundation and many different other big wigs and big corporate companies came together to simulate the corona. And you can see it right here. They also were together and working together with the Rock Foundation. Okay, and this document, which I'm going to show you now, is called the uh, scenarios for the future of technology and international development okay you can find this on the rock foundation website okay now this is the interesting part about this now it, this document goes into grave details it literally opens up the pandora's box and showing you exactly step by step from the very beginning of their agendas to make the corona as successful as possible and to go live with it on purpose to justify all of the that you're seeing right now the lockdowns the also the forced vaccinations which are coming now in the near in, in the near uh, future okay now i found the holy of all holy grails of behind all of these people and all of their plans. I found their master plans, okay? And it is information highway. A lot of you all familiar with the committee or the, the club 300 or the committee 300. Okay, the committee 300 is a group of 300 of the most wealthiest people around the world that have many, many different corporate uh, uh, corporations and, co and corporate companies and these people have high level influential powers over all global governments worldwide they make and design and create global governance and they literally create the ability or should I say take total control over the way government is ran everywhere you look at, whether it's in the United States, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Africa, even in the third world countries, okay, it, it literally controls every government and it works very close together with United Nations. Now, 
I'm going to show you the holy of all holy grails. And I'm going to take you to the world. Okay? And you can all see the title. You can tell where the title is at and who it, who it belongs to. This is, belongs to the Committee of 300. And many other different corporate uh, corporations and companies and, and uh, CEOs are all sponsors of that, even if they're not a part of the 300 Committee. But they all pay membership to this organization. Okay, now given their ideas and their influences and all this stuff is how that they create what you're seeing right now. Now, when you go here on this uh, website, okay, you're going to go to the tab that says Platforms, and then you're going to go to Corona Action Plan, which is highlighted right here, okay? And then you're going to click on it. And while it's opening up, I'm going to play the video uh, that's on that page once it uh, opens up and I want you to listen to key information that's on this video and because I'm going to pause it and highlight it so that you can all hear it and I'm going to I'm going to uh, alliterate what they said and make sure that you all understood that clearly and I'm going to play it over again so you can make sure you heard it the second time so you cannot say it was just made up okay so now the page is opened up. Now you can see the title. You can see what it stands for. Now, first of all, before I go any further, I want you to all understand one thing. This corona is not a real live pandemic. It is a fraud. It is a lie that all the global elites, including all these corporate club committee 300, and many other members and supporters and sponsors of it were all behind staging the lie as a smokescreen, okay? So I want you all to pay very, very close attention to this because it's going to really rock your world because I found the literal holy grail of all damn concealed planning and very, very deceitful designs that were created by these very people right here that made everything you see around you come to a reality even though it was a smokescreen that made it possible. Watch careful. And they go on to admitting that they were using crisis actors. Okay? Acting out all that you see worldwide including in Iran. Okay? Because a lot of the Iranian people are disturbed about how many people are dying in there and they believe that it's real because some of them's got the, you know, influenza, some of them's got the codes and all this stuff and they think it's all related to the coronavirus, okay? But it is not, okay? It is not. Just watch me when I say and listen to what it says on this video real quick. I want you all to pay very close attention, please. Listen in. We face a global health emergency. The unprecedented spread of COVID-19 is disrupting lives and economies in every part of the world. It will impact every one of us, and the sum of individual actions won't be enough to stop it. Gathering actors from the public, private sectors, and civil... There. You see that? Gathering actors from the, pu from the public, private sectors... You see, this is referring to crisis actors, people from all the private sectors to act out this corona platform, the smoke screen. Okay? You listening carefully? Now what continue listening to this. Civil society to work towards a common goal has been at the heart of the World Economic Forum's work for almost 50 years. This is why we are launching the COVID action. Now, you hear that? They have been planning this for 50 years. 50 years. Notice how they have everything already laid out. Everything already planned. Everything already designed, worked for, 
this took 50 years when you're fixing to see what I mean about that this was not just something that happened overnight or just a few months ago. This was already in effect in planning for 50 plus years until current day to day. And I'm fixing to show you how. This is going to rock your world. But continue listening for the, la for the last few segments of this. Watch. In platform, a unique coalition that will address the crisis in three main ways. First, activate the global business community for collective action. Now, notice how the medical, acting, when you see that big old needle, because this seems to be the thing that they keep wanting to uh, put up in everybody's bodies. Okay, watch this. By improving coordination between them and sharing insights and best practices. Second, protect everyone's livelihoods and ensure business continuity by sharing the latest tools to assess risks, maintain operations, and protect employees. Finally, engage... There, finally. Engaging in vaccines. You see that? Business for the COVID-19 response by strengthening the supply chains for medical equipment. Vaccines, look at that. That seems to be the big focus right there through all of this smoke screen. And funding the development of vaccines, treatments, and cures. There are many ways you can contribute and join the COVID action platform. Find out how on WEFT. Now, now you can see right here in this image right here, the seeing eye. This is also found on their website. But anyhow, now you got that point. They're using crisis actors. They even admit it. Okay? Even have stakeholders, which, which is, what's this? Hang on a second. Let me go down here. Let me push this right here. Okay? This is the summary. Okay? In the International Organization of the Public-Private Corporations of the World Economic Forums, acting as partners to the World Organization is mobilizing all stakeholders to protect lives and livelihoods. Okay? The dramatic spread of the COVID-19 is disrupted lives, or has disrupted lives, excuse me, livelihoods, communities, and business worldwide. All stakeholders, especially global businesses, must urgently come together to minimize its impact on public health and limits uh, its potential to further or for further disruption to lives and economies around the world. Okay, now I find this very interesting. They have what you call the, uh, but the sum of many individual actions will not add up to the sufficient response only coordinated actions by businesses combined with global mistake and uh, multi-task holders, corporations, and exceptional scale and speed can potentially mitigate the risk and impact of this unprecedented crisis, okay? Our contribution, okay? The spread of the corona demands global corporations among governments, international organizations, and the businesses community. This multitask holder corporations is the center of the World Economic Forum's missions and international organizations for public and private corporations. Now, Watch carefully, guys, because now I'm going to get all of your attention drawn to this most crucial evidence I've ever found in all of my research. This is showing a 50-year platform design of bringing about the smoke screen that you all heard, the corona, to bring global change in a way that you never knew was happening behind and underneath your feet. Watch this. When you go here, you have to, first of all, remember, you have to register your name and, you, and your email in order to be able to view what I'm about to show you. Okay, so when you go here on Strategic Intelligence, Corona 19, okay, you go right here. And wait for it to open here. I'm going to show you all how to navigate through here, okay? This is really big, guys. This, I can't even stress to you all how big this is. This is the Pandora's box. You're looking at the most sophisticated algorithm mapping system ever designed. And it's designed through 
the cloud program, which I'm going to uh, enlarge this so you can see it. Give me just one second here, okay? All right. He's waiting for it to load because it's, because of the screen, uh, building the screen up on this. It's taking longer to do it. There's, a, there's so much information stored in this, it's unreal. Just give it a time. It's just going to be a minute to load up. Okay. I want you all to feast your eyes on the most sophisticated algorithm mapping system you ever see in your life. This took forever for these people to do. This wasn't something they just stumbled on in the last few for, in the last few weeks. You can see the name on, on there took a long time to program this into this system. Okay? Watch carefully. Pay very close attention. Over here it gives you a group of categories. Okay? Under the corona. It gives you the government response to corona. Corona uh, impacts on financial markets. Corona-19 impact on travel. Corona-19 impacts on trades and finding vaccinations. Avoiding corona infections and spread. Okay? Now, each one of these little strings that you see this right uh, here are all tentacles that are what you call layers. Okay? They're layers of information that just goes on and on and on and on. You see them highlighting when I rub my mouse over it? Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a demonstration. And now over here is the summary of each title you click on will show up here. Also giving you read, you know, where you can read more of it. You can also, some, some of them will have audio uh, where you can play the audio. And you can, but I encourage you to listen to the audios too because they give clue informations and keyword informations in there that reveals everything we've been showing you all and have been talking about for the longest time, okay? Now, also gives you videos, gives you uh, extra data that you can, uh, about each subject that you want to get on. Okay, also gives you the latest news and articles that you can find here on, in this section here on the subject, okay? So this is, this is the information hell. It is the literal holy grail of everything I've ever dreamed of having. It opened up the Pandora's box and shows you all how they changed government using Corona as a smokescreen to do it. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be totally shocked when you see this. But you already knew when we've been talking, giving warnings before, that they're trying to form a one-world government. And now you see that all in one. Watch. Now, do you see that? I clicked on government response to, co to the corona, and you see the tentacles open up? Okay. Now, over here gives you the summary of what, it, of what it's, in, how you say, enduring, okay, what it's talking about. And on that subject, it gives you all the details on this particular subject, okay. Now, then up here, you can see where it gives you all the categories where they're going to change or where they wanted to change the government and change uh, into this new world order. Okay, citizens and, and uh, urban, uh, sorry, citizens and urbanization. Okay, workforce and employment, civic uh, uh, participation, public uh, finance and social protection, health care delivery, and justice in law. See, even they wanted to change the laws and do away with the Constitution. That's all because of the corona as a smokescreen. And then global governance, which means in referring to one world government, okay? And then also gives you the, uh, the agile governance and humanitarian action. And then and on this, it gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine tentacles just under this subject here. Now we're going to click on this. Now you got to remember each tab that you click on, and each title or, t or topic you click on has 200 layers or more on that subject. Watch, it changes. I click on one. 
Watch what happens. It changes the, the map, and it gives you layers after layers after layers. Okay? Now, your categories even change because these are the categories under the global governance that we just picked, okay? It gives you all the summary over here, just like you had on the first one, okay? But it gives you titles after titles all under the under the global governance. So we're going to go here. You got here uh, rising uh, multipolarity, and then you have anti-globalism, and then deepening the inter, inter I'm sorry interdependence, transnational actors, and there you go, trans actors, more actors. They love using actors, okay? Institutional. Uh, uh, polarism okay now we're going to click on this one just so we can give you an, an idea of what we're talking about okay oh also you have 5g network see all that was also included everything to in, to imply and to create new security systems and all this this goes into details people all of their plans that they have been working on for 50 plus years see they did not just come up with Corona. This is wicked stuff. Okay? Now, watch. We're going to go to anti-globalism, okay? And we're going to read this a little bit. We're going to, and then I'm going to see if there's got a video, or let's see if we can just listen to it first. Hang on a second. Let's listen to the audio before I go any further. Listen to the audio. Here's Thomas Hale from the University of Oxford describing some of the key issues associated with the topic of global governance. We need global governance more than ever. In a world of deepening interdependence, global issues are the daily bread and butter of what governments are trying to deliver for citizens. We can't have peace or prosperity, live good lives, unless we're dealing with things like climate change or pandemic disease or global financial crises. But the tools we use to manage these kind of global issues, to manage our interdependence, are increasingly gridlocked. If we think about the global trade system, we haven't had a new trade deal at the multilateral level for about 20 years. If you look at the Middle East, we see uncontrollable wars um, spiraling out of control without any kind of collective security apparatus to prevent them from slipping over into other issue areas. And related, we see, for example, a global migration crisis where people are moving in search of a better life, in search of human dignity, and not being able to be cared for by a global system that's under incredible strain. For all these reasons, we need a strong global governance system to help manage our common challenges and deliver the real needs citizens are, are clamoring for. But unfortunately, we actually see a backlash against global governance. And actually, these two things are linked. In fact, the very... There. They're already identifying a backlash against global governance. Okay? <laughs> see, that's, they're referring to people like us, people like myself, who is against one world government. We believe that everybody should be a, govern, a, a government of their own, a culture of their own, not to form any borders together. There's no reason into it other than you're trying to enslave the world. That's the whole purpose why they're trying to globalize everything under one central control. And this, where we have one master, one currency, one religion. And that's worshiping the master. So, and that, that right there, I'm not going to do. And we're not, I'm not for this game that they're trying to do. So, anyhow... So they've already been studying this for a long time. They would create, uh, you know, beta tests to see and study how we would respond and act upon those beta tests and as a way to, uh, to set into place laws that protect them with their agendas to, go, to move forward and to also to imprison us if we get too close or try to expose them for their corruptions. They would use all of our systems and institutions to turn against the American people and, and also against every individual person worldwide. And their governments were also behind the one world government. Iran was behind it. All, I mean, every country, Iran, Turkey, all of the Middle Eastern countries were all for the global governance. They all already were on board. Every, they were all pretending to be enemies with each other so that you, they could keep you always focused on the enemy, always creating issues that you're focused on the issues, instead of focusing on what these SOBs were doing behind the scenes. And now you see exactly what they were doing. 
they were not just creating a one world government. They were going in detail with their one world government. And you notice how he calls us out and calls us nationalist backlash against globalization. That's what he says right here. And that's what he was talking about, about the backlash. Listen to that. Failure to manage globalization, to manage global issues, creates conditions under which nationalist or populist movements come to power. Now, those leaders are in many ways articulating legitimate grievances, people who have been hurt by the financial crisis in 2008, for example, or who are struggling to adjust to new realities, um, you know, are, right, are right to uh, stand up and demand some sort of collective solution. But unfortunately, they're increasingly demanding solutions that are not constructive to, to solving the problem, but instead undermining the ability of governments to cooperate across borders to resolve the problems that gave rise to the backlash in the first place. And so we see a self-reinforcing cycle of gridlock where a failure to manage globalization and manage global governance well leads to more reactions against globalization that make the problem even harder to solve. Basically telling us that let the government handle everything and we back nationalist uh, backlashers that are against the globalization, just back off and just trust the government. Put all your love in the government. They will handle everything. No, people, that is not what they're trying to do. We're trying to enslave the damn world. We're not here to be slaves to their order. And they're not trying to do it for the better of the, of the good for every, every human being on the planet. Because they're trying to force microchip implants, create artificial intelligence. I mean, they already have it, which I'm going to show you here right now. Okay, but first before I do that, I'm going to show you the anti-globalism. Okay, now remember I said each topic has 200 layers of information. It just keeps on going. Corporate governance and civic uh, participation and uh, taxation, work and em employment and geopolitics, values, uh, migration, geoeconomics, Turkey, United States, climate change. And, it goes, and this is, well, I'm sorry, not climate change, but that, that's where it, um, just anti-globalism and you click on any one of those it takes you down another rabbit hole and it's just like one it just continues and goes on and on and on and on non-stop and deepening independent uh, interdependence okay watch this and it lights up it goes all the way to civic participation taxation climate change european union environmental and natural resources global health and uh Corona 19, 5G. In other words, this is all under the Corona 19 that they wanted to bring this changes in and to add 5G using the Corona 19 to alienate that and to, and to make it possible. Okay? And when you click on that, 5G, watch this. It opens up a whole nother Pandora's box. And it gives you all the summaries over here on the on the right hand side. You can even watch videos on the 5G and also the news on 5G, and and how that they also industrial the internet is fighting the uh, corona. Okay, they're not fighting the corona, guys. This is what I'm trying to say. What they're trying to do is use the corona as a smokescreen, so that all of these places that in these little uh, ideas and that they're trying to come up with to put you all on the spectrum, on a global controlled grid. And 5G was the chosen grid they want to put you in. In other words, every man will be microchipped and they will be entered into the 5G network where they can share and transfer information about you all over the world in a megasecond, okay, or in a millisecond. So you can see the infrastructures, okay? Cities and urban, I'm sorry, um, not that one. We just cut, missed that one here. Digital identity, okay? That's one that there for the 5G. That's about the biometrics, okay, being in, uh, implanted in everybody. But notice how it's all hidden under the corona, uh, under the corona screen, under the corona smoke screen, okay? Cybersecurity, financial and uh, monetary systems, banking and capital markets. So they can now control your, all of your banking movements and activity worldwide under one central control system. No matter what you do, they do it. It belongs to them. They own it. They control it. They do whatever they want with your money. They can even make your money deleted on your account 
and you will be completely deleted from surviving in this new world order. Supply chain and transport. This is right here, the banking and capital markets. Okay? International security. On and on. Internet of things and healthcare delivery, geoeconomics and global risks. Okay? You can go on and on and on and on and on and on. Five spectrum. Let's see what that goes in. Okay? It gives you, it, it focuses on changing in the cities and urbanization, infrastructures, future of, of computing, public financing and social protection, and sustainable development. And me, guys, I am telling this stuff is big. Big. You can't make this stuff up. I told you already. We found the Holy Grail. We, I told you these people, the corporate companies, were the ones behind all these games. They were the ones promoting this. They're the ones constantly building and building and building and building uh, the ability and using staged actors to act out these scenarios that they were designing so that they could get all of your freedoms. 9-11 was created by these people. Now you ask, where are these people from? Mossad. Kabbalah. Every one of them. They're all members of the Kabbalah. Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Skull and Bones. This is what you're seeing, guys. This is their work. The art of the demons. This is what they do best. Sitting and planning and planning how they can destroy the lives of every human being on the planet. And also, creating subhumans. And artificial intelligence. You remember we covered that a while ago? Let's go and do that right now. Artificial intelligence right here. Okay? That's going to be under the five create the five value creation. Okay? And it goes into also Republic of Korea and automotives, okay? Controlling the automotive industry, internet and things, and infrastructure, future and economics and sustainable uh, developments and, uh, and agile governance. And digital communications and also European Union, retail, consumer goods and lifestyle, artificial intelligence, which is right here. Use of robots, making us either subhuman or using robots to replace the humans altogether. Okay? Let's see if it's got an audio for it. I hope it's got an audio. Let's see if it's got an audio. I uh, don't think it does, okay? But we got, let's see if we got a video for it. A device for the earlier detections of eyesight problems, okay? How to ensure human control, look at that, over autonomous weapons, okay? Shaping trustworthy artificial intelligence. And tiny robots with giant potentials, okay? And when humans become cyborgs, you, you see that what I'm talking about? Right there. When humans become cyborgs. That's brutal, guys. I'm going to play that. You should play a video. Give me just a second, guys. I'm just waiting for the video to load. But this is crazy. But I don't think it's going to let me play the video. It's going to take forever to do it. So it's okay. Don't have to worry about it. We'll just get out of there. Okay. We'll just do it another time. Okay. So now you see what I'm talking about. It just goes on. Intelligent augmentation. No, this is the data. Okay. Okay. Let's go here. This one here goes here to intelligence and augmentations. Okay. We can do this all night long, guys. This will take me forever to get through all this. But I'm just giving you just brief ideas for another uh, five more minutes and then, or 15 more minutes, and then we'll call, we'll call it night. Okay, but listen carefully, guys. You can just keep on going with this. It just keeps on going. And how, and aging, okay? 
what they want to do with the aging society. They're called, let's go look at that because I've been curious what they're thinking about aging. The intelligence and augmentation. Elder and caregiving. This is the United States. I don't know what happened here, but let's try it again here. Oh, and also you can click on these tabs right here, these blue tabs. You can click on those. Those, those will carry you down a rabbit hole. You just, just keep on going. Okay, here we go. An aging population is creating new demands for workers, okay, and rever re see, reverberating across economies. As older populations expand faster than younger populations, it is dis disrupting traditional social structures where younger family members have had primary responsibilities for caring for their elders and creating more dependency uh, on hospitals and institutions. The gap between the need for elderly caregiving and existing supplies is widening. By 2060, there will be only one caregiver in Europe for every 51 people uh, aged 80 and, or older, according to the European Commission's pro uh, projections. As elder caregiving needs, in needs increase and so-called care economy is emerging, it is, it is having a significant impact on the workforce as it leads to increased absentee, uh, absent, see, absenteeism and decreased uh, productivity. Okay, hinders gender, see they're talking about killing them. They're talking about eradicating this problem. Guys, they're talking about killing our elderly. This is what they're referring to. They're not a problem to our society. The elderly are never and has never been a problem to our society. We have always managed to work around them. Even new companies emerge and keep the economy going. As long as these companies are going, gives people employment and also keeps the economy going. You see how these son of a bitches keep lying and keep build and building up a reason to do away with people and to do away with the and, and bring change that goes into a negative direction instead of a positive direction. They're looking at it as, as a headache, a problem, a problem that needs to be addressed and taken care of. The need to provisions quality care for the elderly is already disrupting national economies. Countries in Europe and in North America, as well as in Japan and Republic of Korea, are looking to implement significant reforms in order to meet the needs of aging populations. In addition, as emerging economies such as Brazil, China, Turkey, and South Africa grow older at a faster rate than they become wealthier. The uh, social economic impact of the elderly care in those countries could be particularly devastating. S new solutions are essential. Gre uh, greater prominence for the home care industries for the provide employment opportunities for women and minorities according to Caring in America. In 2011, report for the uh, the Para Professional Healthcare Institute, in addition, in order to sufficiently adapt to the new realities of aging incentives, okay, for saving for long-term care, more training and education to elderly caregivers, and the application of innovation. They're referring to Agenda 21. This is what they're referring to. I want to see if we got Agenda 21 in here. Let's type that in. No, of course not. No, that would be very bad, but no have to be. Because they've already, I mean, pretty much they swing, you know, they're pretty much uh, leaving it wide open right there with their, with their statements. That it's apparently a problem to them. How has it ever been a problem that we take care of our elderly people? It's never been a problem. That really ticks me off. So anyhow, so now that you see the strategic outcome behind this, now you understand my anger about it, but my happiness at the same time because we are able now to catch these lying SOBs. We have finally caught them, okay?
and these are all of the darkest web or darkest secrets you can ever get on the web and the 5g network you can go on here and read all you want on the 5g network okay everything you want to know it's all here these are all the things that they're going to bring change in these are all the things you're going to see drastic changes eradication of people that are considered useless eaters like the elderly poor people that's that creates basically a stress and a problem for the economy. It has never done this. It's always been very vibrant. The problem is, is our government had too much high level expending and spending habits and borrowed money and made us the taxpayer hold made the taxpayers the debt holders of their debt. And it just goes on. But they're using 5G for artificial intelligence. You see that? Right here. 5G for artificial intelligence. Greater corporations is needed for foster to uh, foster deployment. Okay, when used to power the internet of things, artificial intelligence and big data, 5G can deliver significant social values. Wow, guys, this is big. I don't care what anybody says. This has hit the damn nail on the head. It is the biggest, biggest thing you'll ever see in your life. Thank you for being stupid, you know, club committee or whatever you want to call them, committee of 300. Thank you for being very stupid and putting this out here in the open because now we're going to go viral with it. I want the world to see what you all are. You're nothing but a pathetic piece of crap. Lying bastards is what you are. Deceptors that need to be removed and put in prison for the rest of your lives. Have a good journey, buddy. Hope, they, hope this war that you brought upon the world, I hope it was worth it because we're not going to lose this battle. You will. But anyhow, I hope you all enjoy this video and I look forward to making another one for you all. Make this, this video go viral, please, guys. This is very important that you all make this video go viral. We need the world to wake up and see the truth. The Pandora's box does not lie. They, you can see that this took longer than the, than the corona even existed. And you can tell that they created the corona and adding it in as a part of their mapping ideas. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Enjoy, guys. I have to go. You all take care, and I hope to hear your comments. Put all your comments below. Tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about the information shared with you in this video because we need to know. And subscribe. Hit that subscribe button because the more you subscribe, the more people will come to this and more people will be drawn to watch it. We need to get people here. The more you upload it, get and repeat this video, make as many videos as we can on the subject because we need people to see this. Okay? So, by saying that, you all have a good evening. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you.